Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's been doing well, been doing good. Today I wanted to discuss something that showed up on my TikTok last week that, that gave me pause. That kind of made me go, wait a second, mm, I'm not so sure about this. And that was a live stream where a creator was helping the people watching their live stream count their macros. I grew up pretty athletic. You know, I was playing sports. I was doing all that kind of stuff, but I'm not much of a like a fitness content connoisseur, right? So I don't follow these fitness accounts or like workout accounts or like diet content. The only like related account that I can think of that I follow is a dietitian, but I will get into that later. Anyways, that is to say, I didn't really know what counting macros meant. Like I kind of had an idea, you know, but like logistically, wasn't really sure. However, I didn't really know that this is what that creator was doing when I like stumbled upon her live. So let, let me set the scene. I was scrolling on my TikTok feed just like I shouldn't and TikTok force fed me a live stream just like TikTok shouldn't. And what I heard in the first few seconds that I was on that live stream before I realized what it was, which is a live, which I don't really watch. So before I realized and like moved on, what I heard from the creator was her telling one of the viewers that if she wanted to lose weight, this is how many calories she should be eating. So I scrolled on and I was like, wait a second, what did I just hear? And I came back to the live. I still didn't stay very long on the live, but I stayed long enough to find out that what the creator was doing was helping her viewers count their macros. I truly wish I would have screen recorded because it was it was really off-putting. It was quite uncomfortable going back and it, it really like shocked me a little bit, you know, once you're on the internet so long, I think it's hard to be surprised, maybe? I wasn't expecting it, I guess. I think part of what made it uncomfortable, like the whole thing generally, but was kind of the way she was doing it was like, she'd read the comments and then she would type on her computer a little bit and then she would like read off her computer and be like, oh, hey, if you want to lose this much weight or you want to get to this goal weight, you should be eating this much. You should be consuming this many calories. And she would like not look at the camera when she would say it really. She would be like looking at her computer and like the lack of eye contact or like talking directly to someone was really quite uncomfortable to me. So that's kind of what I want to talk about today because I think this can be dangerous for that particular reason. Because clearly on a live, we see the creator, but the creator is not seeing us. So they really don't know who they're talking to when they're particularly giving advice. A lot of the time this can be harmless. You know, maybe you're just shooting the shit on your live. It's not that deep sometimes, but I think you need to be really careful with certain types of content if you're just producing it widely and you don't know who you're talking to. And particularly with lives, I think people can speak more directly one-on-one -on -one with someone, but still like the creator isn't seeing who they're having that, you know, quote unquote, one-on-one -on -one conversation with. TikTok dietitians don't know who they're talking to. They don't have our medical files. They don't know if they're talking to somebody with an ED. They don't know if they're talking to a child. And maybe you think, just don't watch it. But TikTok's For You page, which is the main thing that opens when you open the app, is an algorithm. Like I don't choose directly which videos I'm seeing or which uh, like content creators I'm seeing. And like I said, I don't watch live. So I scrolled past it pretty quickly. And still within that time, I was able to hear kind of like a little bit of off-putting information, you know, like someone being like, oh, hey, you should eat this many calories if you want to lose weight. Just like in a few seconds, like that can be in itself, that small amount can be very triggering to people, I think. Sorry, I know I keep bringing up like the typing on the computer, but to me, it just seems like they were plugging something into a formula. So like maybe they were just like in Excel, you know, like filling in these like boxes. So they're like giving out this information one based on like a very, this is me assuming, but just like based on a formula. And the part I think that really bothers me and kind of prompted me to make a video is that if I had seen that while in middle school, which is like a time where you're really impressionable, I was really impressionable, I think I would have taken her word as gospel. Like I would have done or believed anything she said, even though I was a child. I don't want to talk about the specific creator for too long because she's not like a super big creator. And I don't think she's intentionally trying to be harmful. I think nutrition is something that she's interested in and she's trying to get her service some traction. However, I do want to say when I looked on her page, I could not find any licenses or certifications right away. It took me a while to find it. And the only way I found it was by hitting her like link tree. And in her link tree, she had a link to her service, which is like a coaching questionnaire. So if you want her to help coach you nutritionally or something, that had her certifications, which were not like formal education, but had two different certifications for like being a nutritionist, I guess. I did look up these two like companies that give these certifications out and they did have really bad customer reviews on the Better Business Bureau, so the BBB, but they do seem like the two companies you go to for nutritionist certification. However, I'll get into that a little bit more because that's not exactly like 
the thing that you want when you're speaking to someone for nutrition advice. So I will get into that later. Like I said, she's trying to sell coaching at a pretty like high price, but she's not the only one. You know, there's multiple creators on TikTok, which is again why I'm talking about this, kind of soliciting this advice. One creator I found was posting about adding salt to water. Because it's iconic and I love to do iconic shit. And I was like, mm, okay, interesting, but weird. And if you hop on Google, like the first thing that pops up, if you look up like adding salt to water, is adding salt to water good for you? The first thing that comes up on Google says, if you consume excess sodium from salt, your body will try to maintain homeostasis by retaining water, making it hard for your heart and blood vessels to work properly. Okay, so if you're not giving like very specific information, it can be like not the best advice, right? Like proving here like this is not the best advice if it's not given specifics. Like just adding salt to water can be bad for your heart. Excess sodium can be bad for you. Also, at the same time, you also shouldn't trust the first thing you find on Google. So I looked at a few more sources and there are sources who directly call out like this trend on TikTok being like, mm, wait a minute, uh, TikTok, maybe, maybe don't get your health advice from TikTok. There's one from today literally calling out TikTok creators saying you need to follow specific parameters if you're adding salt to your water and as little as a 16th of a teaspoon can be enough or is enough to add to your water if you want to have positive health benefits but this TikTok I saw by this creator gave the vaguest information without giving any measurements so I'm imagining people adding like a lot more salt than is necessary and like I said that can be not good for you so it's just like this is what I'm saying TikTok in itself is usually quite short form content so if they're not giving very specific helpful information it can be bad and also like a lot of these creators are doing like trendy health friends on TikTok when it's just like oh my god like health Health shouldn't be a trend. Sorry, you're crooked. If I had to guess, I would say this trend probably comes from long distance running. Like sometimes if you're running a half marathon or a full marathon or anything longer than that, they'll have at like the aid stations like pickle juice because pickle juice has like salt in it, has sodium in it. So it'll help you replenish your sodium when you're running long distance, which is like how you lose it, you know, because you're sweating it out. So I think like maybe someone like took the jump and they were like, ah, oh, salt and water daily will do the trick. Waste time, say lot word when few word do trick. So I think there's just been like a bit of a blurring of like when this would actually be helpful. I don't think it's new on TikTok, <laughs> like all this health information. People are constantly pushing supplements, their workout plans, new diets, the things you need to buy in order to achieve your health goals, greens, which seems to be a huge market that I can't escape from, powders, energy drinks. It's just a consumer nightmare health TikTok. It really is. And I know that this kind of content in like diets are not a new concept on the internet. There has obviously been a lot of public diet programs like Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem or whatever, the Adkins diet, you know, like we've we've seen these for a long time in like TV advertisements. And there's always been diet apps like MyFitnessPal or Lose It or things akin to that. And again, I don't want to say that these are all bad. Like I'm really not saying that but I don't think they're always good. To me, these feel really reminiscent of the like 90s skinny, heroin chic, pale grunge Tumblr era, but that might be just because I grew up in the 2000s. So that's kind of when like the idea of what a woman was supposed to look like and act like began being like pushed on me. And I know I had my fitness pal in high school, which I was already pretty small because I was doing so many sports and also I was, you know, I don't know, going through puberty. Like, I think that's a time where we have the least control of our, like, bodies and, like, what we look like because everything is changing so much. But I do think I got the app because I was so invested in sports at that time, like, as a child. So I wanted to be as healthy as possible. And, you know, I would go through these phases, right, where I would want to be super healthy. I just don't think that, like, calorie counting is something somebody should be worrying about before algebra while their brain is still smooth mush. You know, and sometimes people say, oh, you know better. You know, at that point, you you should know better at that age. But like, sometimes you just don't know better. Like not everyone's lived experiences are the same. This is to say that I think TikTok's diet advice is a little bit different from the type of diet advice we were consuming a few years ago. That's not to say that, you know, YouTube and Instagram content about, you know, diet and health didn't exist in the past, like clearly it did. But I do think like TikTok, even the app in general, but also like health advice has captured the attention of like the general public more aggressively than I've ever seen. Like there are so many teens and tween content creators now. Like I've gotten get ready with me for high school videos. Like, 
Who has time for that before high school? Are kids not mean anymore? Like I would have gotten such crap for doing that in high school and totally unrelated. But guys, I saw a furry walking casually with his friend on Harvard's campus last weekend. I was just like, I'm, I'm feeling so aged right now. I don't know what's happening anymore. And my moral that I'm trying to get at here is I don't think we should post super specific diet advice on TikTok. You straight up could be telling an 11 year old how many calories they should be consuming, which could be like way too small of an amount. Like you don't know them and they will take it as gospel because you are an adult or you are older than them. Here is one piece of advice. Here is one piece of it. Advice, advice. Here is one piece of advice. Here is one piece of advice I have for people on TikTok. Advice. If you want to get into health, if you're interested in health, please get it from credible sources, okay? Like I said earlier, okay, call, calling back to now, I follow one TikTok dietitian, keyword dietitian. I've been following her for ages. I actually don't know when I started. Her name is Steph Grasso and keyword skin here, okay? MSRD, real degrees that she went to many years of school for, formal education. She makes videos about creating a healthy relationship with food, you know, consuming enough fiber and protein and like making meals that'll get you all these things to make your body feel good. Videos like that, okay? She's not making videos that encourage diet fads that are trending on TikTok, okay? Masters of Science, registered dietitian. She's got initials after her name. So my advice is to look for dietitians with degrees listed after their names. If someone says they are a nutritionist, okay? Nutritionist requires no education. Like you can call yourself a nutritionist right now if you want to. Anybody can be a nutritionist without education. However, to be a dietitian, you have to go through formal education, accredited education. Also, if they're selling a program, like if you go on their profile, and they're selling a program, hoist your red flag, my friend. That is a little, I would be immediately suspicious. My hope is that anyone watching this video will be just a little bit more prepared when encountering this kind of content in the wild that is the internet and TikTok. If you're feeling unsure about your own personal health, I recommend seeing a doctor or a registered accredited dietitian. Steph gives off such kind energy. There are good, kind health professionals who are doing their job because they want to be there for you. They want to help you in any way they can. It's why they do what they do. If you're peripherally interested in health, you know, you're not like super invested, but you want to learn a little bit more. I recommend checking out websites that have like .gov, .edu after them, because these are going to be like official government or education institution sources, okay? Which should be trustworthy. All right, that's all I wanted to do. Is I just wanted to jump on here and talk about this really quickly. My socials will be in the description if you want to see any more content from me talking about some other stuff. Sometimes it's more lighthearted then subscribe. I want to say thank you for 500 subscribers. I'm like nervous saying it because I'm barely over 500, so this could easily <laughs> fall back down. I do want to say thank you. This is a very big milestone for me and I'm really grateful. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace, love, and happiness. Bye. And then I went back to the live to see what I, what I had stumbled upon. That was really bad acting. What I had stumbled upon.